I'll I'll give it to Team Secret. I think they're just going to make it happen. All right. Well, they have yet to really show any shortcomings with this Bloodseeker. Let's see if EG can finally put a hole in this plan as we send it over to our casters for game number one. That's right, we already have one team in the upper bracket final. That is OG, and it's going to be exciting to see how this series pans out before Secret do eventually take their place in the upper bracket final as well. Jenkins going to be joining us uh, as yeah, possible. I, I mean, that's how you got to play the game, man. Don't hate the, don't hate the player. That's uh, you know, with the whole streamer situation going on, right? Same exact thing. Got to yeah. blame, uh, blame the game, not the player. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Secret as well, there's some very clickbaitable uh, players as well, given that they're you know, on a complete tear um, for um, about a year now. Yeah. Just completely, they seem to be the best team in Dota, period, by a huge margin. I and feel I, like there's not a single name on Secret that doesn't draw no, fans oh, man. at that point. Are you serious? I mean, of course, of course. Puppy, anything draft related with Puppy. This guy's a genius. He's a god. I think a lot of people are just expecting this to be a complete massacre. So if EG does anything in this game, I think they're going to exceed expectations given how Secret has performed. Evil geniuses are notorious for running the same uh, kind of play styles, or at least having a preference that leans towards a certain kind of play style for a very long time now. And one of those heroes would certainly fit into that Archetype, Naga Siren, Split Push, Heavy, oh, yes. Late Game, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Why did they pick this Naga Siren, Jenkins? Okay, so I I'm going to call them out for this. I was in a pub with Arteezy about, we'll say, uh, one to two months ago. He called this hero dog shit. <laughs> a friend of mine was playing it and, you know, doing okay. He was farmed and he's like, this hero sucks because it can't end games. He's basically saying, like, this is the worst of the illusion heroes. So I don't know if there's been some buffs to Naga. So you're sorry, you're saying that Arteezy flamed your friend yes. for playing the Naga Siren, 100%. saying that it's it's total dog shit and why do people keep on picking it? Right. And, and now he's here picking it. Right. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, dude, Arteezy, this is your hero, man. <laughs> so I, I think what he was honestly trying to say there is that the ease of execution on this hero, it's just not easy. It's mm -hmm. hard to end games with Naga Siren, but if you're good at it, perhaps it's still good. I mean, especially if you're running this very interesting aggro tri lane against the lifestealer, I think this will do pretty well. Yeah, and that, that is a very key factor, right? Is pubs, very often people are just picking just to pick, but uh, here they have a sort of classic matchup, the, uh, the Naga Siren versus the lifestealer. Yeah, high armored hero on the Naga Siren spawns the illusions. Lifestealer can't do anything to clear those. You can see puppies trying to right click them here, but you know, a Chen can only do so much. How do you think uh, he's going to adjust the Lifestealer, that is? Like, do you think we can see that Radiance build, or is it going to Maelstrom type build, or how, how is he going to be able to adjust this? Or are you just going to go normal? To be honest, I think with the Lashrac last pick, you don't need to go for the Radiance on Lifestealer. It's okay. just not a great build right now in general. I think you want to play faster. I think Lifestealer needs to be the answer to the other heroes, and he's a great answer to the other heroes. I think they can all get bursted as long as the Wyvern is dealt with. And then let the Lashrac, who was last pick, deal with this Naga Siren. So while we're having this uh, tri lane, it does mean we have a 1v1 bottom lane, which is the Furion versus the Bloodseeker. Yes. Which uh, I am I would imagine Zion's going to do perfectly fine here, even though he's got, yeah, the annoying harassment of the Furion. He should be able to, to constantly be healing himself off of killing these creeps, thanks to the Blood Rage. It is one of those matchups, though, where you maybe need to go for a second point in the Blood Rage. Or sorry, the, the passive now is what heals. Yeah, third, so, sorry. So maybe you need to go for like a second point point in the heal just to sustain through that level three level four period mm -hmm. and uh, then maybe you can deal with the treants but we can see right now that uh, Ramses is doing quite well down there I mean it's there's a certain amount of damage where it's just like it's too much to heal through sure also you kind of got a CS advantage then it actually comes with the treants all focusing on denies all at once which can make things difficult for Zai right a lot of these the CS that we see that Zai has this is probably Trance. I mean, as well as the denies, though, that Ramses has. These are, it's, it's probably you know, mo mostly trance. Right, right. 
And that just leads our mid lane matchup, which is the Ember Spirit versus the aforementioned Leshrac. This is supposed to be the answer to the uh, to the Naga Siren. And Peter says it is going to be the linchpin here for Secret. It is all their strategy is entirely dependent on how well Nisha does, how quickly that Yule Scepter is going to be picked up. Yeah, he definitely needs the Yules. They don't have particularly good setup. Other than the Yules, they have the Clockwork, but mm -hmm. Clock is a very weird hero to be setting God. up. You never really want to bank on him doing it. I mean, you'd like for him to do it. You know Clockwork offers disables, but he has to get an angle. He has to also get the cog knockback, the, the timing of that, and it's just not something that's super reliable. Even though he will do it in every fight, it's like, who will he do it on? When will he do it? That's really the question. Right. <laughs> GPK. A little bit of whip there, as the uh, analysts were talking about. GPK has been quite the monster when it comes to laning phase, but uh, has had some unfortunate mid games where he's kind of thrown away some of the advantage he's gotten. But up against easily one of the best mid laners you could possibly go up against in Nisha. And he is not looking like the terror that he was in previous games. 18 and 2 compared to 22 and 6 right now. Nisha getting a good number of denies out of this lane. A yeah, very nice rune control here from EG, taking that arcane rune. That, that would be very annoying for either of these heroes to get. You know, you get that on Ember, and I don't think he has the bottle just yet. I think he probably just got it off, off of the courier. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, he's been using the sips. Zai's doing quite well down here. Yeah, he's picking it up as uh, the third, second level of Blood Rite, really big, third level just, okay, now you're, not only are you one-shotting range creeps, but you're probably taking a melee creep down with you and, and at this point, Treants may actually just be some food for the Blood Seeker. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, even if they just die in range with you, you heal, even if they get denied. So that's that's gotta be quite nice. Nisha, they're gonna try and gank him up here. GPK does not have the shackles, but they're still gonna try and run him down. Very low, the rocket comes in the last hit from Nisha. He just died to the physical damage. Game was hard indeed. You may have made it a little harder for yourself there, GPK. That was an unsuccessful rotation. Dyer's middle tower. Oh, did you attack. see that? Electric was running over to steal their bounty rune. Puppy denied it. Yep. Puppy had already denied it yep. with the neutral creep. Very sad. Heads up play from Puppy, but Nisha's sad. Yeah, it's rotation from Nisha now, trying to catch RTZ. This Naga Siren's just going to be run down. Another win for Nisha here. Ramses. Oh, still gets clipped by the blood, right? Whoops. But I mean, the worst thing here is he's getting zoned off of a bunch of creeps that are going to die to the tower. He needs to TP in immediately. Yeah, he may not have be able to wait until Radiant full bot. health or something. It's scary to do that. I mean, this looks like a huge wave bot. And now, okay, creeps yeah, coming they, down to try to secure this. He's probably calling like, they might end up trying to dive me here. And, uh, well, the Tiny is going to try and even things out here. We haven't talked about the... Ooh, here comes the Wrath of Nature. Zai's going to take a lot of damage. Ooh, there it is, the big hit. <laughs> Tried to zone him out. I want, did, was Ramsey's level 5 when he TP back? I, I, I think, think he, so. I, I think, think he so. got it. He got it from the wave. Yeah, the dying. big wave came in. GPK trying to get away, but Nisha trying to run him down. The illusions. Oh, the tower hits. He's got the bottle. That'll be good enough with the healing south. He's fine. Both the mid laners will barely live. And that rocket hit at just the most inconvenient time and place. Like yeah. if it hits during the bottle and salve, then you cancel that, and he has to go back to base. Which is fine. I mean, he can he can get back. He's an Ember Spear, but it's a little bit more annoying. And I think he might have died if that actually hit there. But once again, speaking of this clockwork here, you never really want to bank on a rocket hitting to get a kill, but it would have sure. been very convenient for Secret. We're going to smoke up just like Nisha made a rotation earlier. Looks like GPK is going to be encouraged to do the same by Crit. We haven't actually talked about the four positions, but uh, Crit and Yapsor have just kind of been running around the map together. It was like four minutes or something, and, and uh, Yapsor was still level one. Very much focused on trying to counter each other's rotations. Right. That that sometimes happens where it's like, if, if I just go where this Radiant tiny goes, then nothing can happen on the map. And then nothing happens on the map. <laughs> it's just like a core battle in the sidelines. Zai, here comes the gank. Throws out the blood right. Nisha is on his way with the silence already out. And Zai still not dead. This is looking quite good for Secret. They're going to be able to get the kill pretty easily on crit. And Zai will heal back up. Great build on Zai, going for the early belt of strength and raindrop as well as Basilius. Like he's got so many little stat efficient items. 
when he played against OG and he was playing this Bloodseeker, he literally just went straight Veil. He didn't send, up, send out any items until Veil because he could be greedy, but in this game, he knows he can't be that greedy. He's got to send out those items. We still have the uh, scan behind the tower, but GPK is here, spotted by the rocket as it went overhead. The Wrath of Nature is going to go out. So they have any vision on these heroes? Doesn't look like it. All of Secret head out of vision and don't take the big nuke damage. They know also that there is a ward uh, to the left there in that uh, Radiant Jungle because the Chen Creep got hit by the Wrath of Nature. So Puppy's already pinged that out. The classic Wrath of Nature ward reveal. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that is the, the plight of many Pub Nature's prophets. Their supports get very mad. Hey man, I can't control that. And it's true. You kind of can. Not not too much. It hits a lot of targets these days. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Almost have the mech on Puppy. He actually went Bassy, so he's not just he's not rushing the mech and still about 750 gold and he'll have that. Just jungling. This is something that Puppy does. This is very annoying. Whenever there's I've been once again pubbing with this guy. Unfortunately on the enemy team, anytime there's space on the map and he's not needed in a lane. He doesn't go rotate. He'll literally just jungle, and then he comes out of the jungle as like with, with core farms. Like, yeah, bro, puppy, come on, man. And with a life stealer, like what better hero to leave alone right. and feel comfortable? You know. Yeah, exactly. And he's, he's not really needed in the lanes. Like this is. You now they're they're chilling for a bit. There's a bit of a grace period, and then I think they'll put on the pressure once they have the Chen Mech plus the Lashrak possibly having a Yules. Man, that seems like a real solid timing. Yeah, and this is looking Radiant's like a snowball that is just going to roll right over evil geniuses as they've already shown they're kind of lacking some damage when it comes to killing some heroes. They need to get those levels up on crit because I think without him being maxed out avalanche toss uh, secret, there's not a big enough threat to stop them at this point. Nisha just going to put himself in this little cupboard and uh, slowly dive bonk eating down the tower. Fly's going to try and go for the last hit and misses. Misses the deny now. Potentially caught here. Slow down, hits the stun, opens up the trees. And Yapsor is able to keep running him down as a result. 10 minute bounty runes are coming up as well. And Matumba Man, he's going to secure one at top, or at least try to. And that's one of those situations where clicking battle, crit wins. Crit does manage to outclick him, so two for two Radiant's split. But well, with this Wyvern defending the bot lane. Oh, oh my oh, god, just die! That was a sick move. Knew he was going to be jumping over the double damage, and they get a big kill on GPK. Zai, you sly dog, you. Wow, that was nice. It's hard to do things with this Bloodseeker offline. It is definitely a good hero, but it's hard to make things happen. Like you, that what we just saw is the skill that it takes to actually, you know, make a play with this Bloodseeker offline. Mm. But it looks damn good when it does work. <laughs> Toss them all over. Just do a spot of damage, secret. It seems like they're gonna just keep on focusing on hitting neutral creeps until they hit that really big critical mass. There's the mech. And uh, I'm not sure who picked up the veil on which side it was. I think that would prob was probably that Zai? be Zai. It yeah. was Zai, yeah. Going for treads this game so that way he can survive the magical damage. In the uh, previous game where he played offlane Bloodseeker, he went brown boots. And then in another one, he went for uh, phase boots because mm. he could play more as a carry and he needed the physical resistance, but he just needs to survive burst in this game. Great. Toss up in the air. Just trying to get Matumba Man off of him. What? Hey, an extra bounty room for evil geniuses. I did actually watch a replay of Matumba Man playing this exact hero in a pub yesterday, and uh, I noticed that he plays very safe on Lifestealer. He will sit in the safe lane, he will not go for any plays, and I think in the game that I watched, that was applicable, that made a lot of sense, Dyer's and I'm interested to see how he changes that up when he's against a Naga Siren. I don't think mm. they're particularly interested in going late. I think they would really like to hit some sort of early game timing with the Lifestealer. I think they have the timing with the mech and, you know, going with Zai and with Nisha mid, but I think Matumba Man also has a bit later of a timing than that that they want to push on, so. Right. So, like, with the most illusion heroes they're looking for like that third item timing and you want to strike before that yes absolutely take as much of the map as you can so that it's just the illusion hero farming and you can see nisha's doing just that putting pressure from the trees with this die ball edict puppy will take the last hit on the tower and the uh, map grows ever smaller for evil geniuses 
Radiant's got that Yules, they have the mech. Yeah, attack. they're they're super ready to go right now. My question is, what, okay, so Matamba makes a move. He's going to start being aggressive, play in the enemy jungle. My question for EG is, what team fight do they have to follow up the Naga song? Because I'm thinking, like, the big turnaround play for them will be Secrets. Obviously, they're Dyer's taking control in the early game. They've mm -hmm. got this kind of tempo lineup. There's a certain point EG want to strike, right? Does it matter if you get that third item on Naga Siren if Lashrak is strong enough to just clear all of your illusions? Like, what yeah, fight sure. do they have to set up? I suppose it's Winter's Curse. They can probably hit a pretty good Tiny Avalanche into Winter's Curse, and yeah. that could work. But it's not a Jakiro, you know? It's not the, what you would expect traditionally with this with this combo. No, certainly not. They, there is no, like, Darkseer Disruptor combination or something like that to be able to play off of Nisha. Getting Sun from the trees, just kind of pushing back GPK. Not a real threat, I would say. Do you try, do you, are these odds fair, do you think? I... Um... Radiance judging by the game right now, I would say it's it's fair. Maybe at the start of the series, it uh, might be a little too secret favored, but it's not that surprising, right? Secret have looked incredibly dominant, and I, <laughs> I would definitely give them a big advantage for this series. It's true. I, I just, it's... It's always very hard to count these like big name teams like you know Liquid and OG Radiant's and EG. It's, it's hard to count attack. them as just complete underdogs because so many times you'll see a team just be dog shit in the group stage and then they'll completely destroy through like a lower bracket run or whatever. Yeah, they'll just find their groove because they're tier one players. Like they're the best of the best. Yeah, and Evil Geniuses has not looked like the cleanest tier one team out there, right? They did lose to Navi, who's already out, right? So yeah, that's like one black mark Radiant's on their run through the group stage. Oh, here's the song. There's the song going out. Matamba? Oh, he's, just, he's just running away. Okay. Oh, they made it. Oh, oh God, I'm stopping his TP. What a sick play from Yapsor. Got the angle. I think Arteezy was trying to kind of use Life Sealer and that one creep to kind of block any potential hooks, but wasn't good enough. Yapsor. The Wily 4 position of Team Secret. He always seems to find a way. That was not an easy angle to hit. Once again, another one of those problems with Clockwork is that y you just have to be there for the opportunity. You just have to be already in position for when it happens. And, I mean, Yapsor was. He was. It's almost like he was expecting it. Look at him. He's going for a meaty hammer. I like it. Yeah. I like it. They don't necessarily lack tower push, but there is a lot of out push on EG to kill creep waves. Naga, Illusions, you know, Winter Wyvern, Ember Spirit. So the more, the merrier in this game. Like, I don't think you want to go late. I think you want to just end this one early. Zai, man, he's cutting through the trees. He's a lumberjack. Yep, 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 and they've spotted Fly. They know he's here. They certainly got him with the Rocket Flare now, so they're going to be able to get the Rupture. Fly will eventually come down to Earth here. We'll use the Cold Embrace. Nobody's coming to save him, though. So they take him, and they take this tier, too. Man, this is... They're, they're putting on a clinic right now. Secret, this, this is just like a tutorial for how to beat Heralds at Dota or something like that. I don't know. That's what this feels like. Well, it feels like EG can't do anything, man. At the same time, in, in typical EG fashion, they're not down net worth wise as much as I would expect. But in some ways, it's just because they haven't gotten into that one really bad team fight yet. True, we, we saw true. it yesterday, right? We we're talking about 3K gold lead, and all of a sudden it was 9K off of one team right. fight. Okay, here we go. This is a big pick. Yeah, this would certainly be a massive one. Is Ramses is definitely going down here in RTZ. Can't really too much to well. save him. He's got to be careful, man. Yeah, certainly. He does not have the song back up yet. And so it was a level one song at that combo here under Matama Man. He turns around, starts laying into crit. I think crit is dead. Slowed down by the purge, but didn't really need it too much. Nine to one to the favor of Secret now. And we can see the gold lead mounting because Secret is basically just moving across the map, taking the towers and basically the kind of flow chart order that you know it's easiest to take. Uh huh. And uh, slowly but surely, EG is getting choked. They're they're going to get less bounties. We're going to see bounty spawn in three minutes from now. That's going to be a big gold difference. Roshan is now available because Secret is able to occupy this triangle with that mid tower being down. We have the top two towers that they need to take. That. Uh, I'm not sure if EG can defend. They do have that Orchid timing on Ramses. That seems like maybe an okay time to fight. But maybe you wait for mm. Crit's Blink as well? Yeah, I, I think you need that clear initiation uh, for sure. And I I don't think Ramses is going to feel super good about team fighting until he has BKB. 
that's a long and way away. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That may be far too long to wait. As uh, Secret is beginning to stretch that lead out a little bit further. Now 5,000 net worth lead as they've taken most of the towers on the map. It's just those top two left. Like the aggressive ward there from Puppy. Just, okay, they're locked in their base. It's very dangerous for them to enter into their jungle. They're mm -hmm. very likely to enter into this kind of small area in their jungle or into the triangle. You put the ward there. <laughs> also, what's with the... I mean, he's got that one aggressive ward, but then he's got three mid lane wards. Yeah, back that, to back to back. That is interesting. Just all in a straight line. So if you take that first Zion's really aggressive top, top, one, then Zion's you're top. still having that other one to worry about. Yep. I get the, the mid lane ward on the top left. It's a Roche ward. I believe there's one there. But the, the other two, maybe it's the order in which he placed it. Like, they did just take those towers, right? Sure. So. Great. He's going to be caught by Nisha. The rotation is going to come out from Ramsey. He's putting in the work with this Orchid. Can they actually get this kill on Anisha, though? He's so damn fast with the Yule Scepter Brute to travel build. He gets out of there pretty quickly. The Purge being used to take away the Flame Guard of GPK. There goes most of his damage. Still holding on to the Chen Hill, too. Uh, one other thing that I noticed watching Matumba's replay, uh, with this life stealer, I'm sure this is like an every carry thing because I think this is just a good concept. Would highly recommend watching Aoi's video on this, but he always values protecting his back lines. Like if he sees that his team is getting gone on, he runs to them immediately. And maybe he doesn't go in if it's too dangerous, but he's always there. He's sure. always there to back them up to be kind of that turret, that 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 rock that his team can go to as a defense. Look at Yapsor. He's been hiding out here on this side of things, and he's going to put that Meteor Hammer to use here. An Orchid. Ramsey's trying to protect himself, trying to get away. There's so many creeps here to tank up the battery salts, but all oh, the Yapsor, because his positioning, still had the hook shot in the tank. He'll probably die for this, but he's going to open up a lot of kills here, as they're going to still be able to take this fight in. GPK has to jump out, and they have to use the Song of Siren to prevent further losses here, but Crit, even with that additional help with the Song of Siren, he's still can't get away. Matama Man is here. He's come to collect. They're going to get the two kills. Radiant Are they even going to go high ground? They will. Okay. They just forced out the clip. All right. All right. Chill. Is under attack. Yeah, they have a lot to still take. This entire top area of the map in Roshan. And by the way, you spoke about the adjustment in Matamba's build. Like, do you go for this Deso, Sanjin Yasha, Heaven's Halberd, whatever, like the regular life stealer build is? He's going for the Maelstrom, mm. the, the Mjolnir. Like, yeah. this is a, this to me seems like the more modern version of this Radiance. And by modern, I mean Radiance became dog shit like Wait. a few months. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But this yeah. is a, you know, this is still a great item. Meanwhile, Arteezy just trying to get a second big stat item, right? He goes for the Manta, it doesn't go for Diffuse Blade. He's like, okay, I need actual stats to survive. He goes for the Scotty over the heart. What do you think about that? The Scotty is just the new, the new age good item. I mm -hmm. think against the Life Stealer, it's great. I mean, against all of these heroes, they have the Chen heals, they have the heals on Bloodseeker, they have the heals on Life Stealer. I mean, how is he supposed to stay on top of this Nisha Leshrac if he ever does get on top of him? Right? It's like he's super fast with Boots of Travel Yules. I honestly think he needs hard Scotty. Oh my God, GPK! He gets hit by the Meteor Hammer. It's not like Yapsor is going to be able to do anything to pull. Okay, maybe <laughs> jumps away to the Remnant. Stun came a little too soon. Yeah, you can see he went for that instant, like, frame-perfect timing. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to against an Ember Spirit. He's just got no cast time on the Remnant. So you have to get very lucky to pull that off. I mean, he's just one of those players. Like, I've seen this guy do the heels coil break on Puck. Almost, almost consistently. But if you can do that, like, once or twice in a game, that's already impressive. That's like a one out of ten times thing. You know, like, you Yules and then it breaks the coil. Yeah, so what you're talking about is coil. If you go to the very edges of it and pop Yules, the Z axis will break the coil. Actually, no, it's, it's because the Yule spins you. So you go, oh. move out of coil range while in Volner. Oh, okay, okay, so okay. He's, he's done that in a game, like, three times. He'll do it in a game. Oh, I so, see, I see. So I'm saying that mechanically, Nish is the type of guy that I would expect to pull something like this off. Right. But it's not easy. Radiance top tower. Well, they got their second tower of the game on Evil Radiance Geniuses. Thanks to GPK's aggression. Ramsey's going to try and collect a third here. Arteezy playing nearby, ready to go with a Song of Siren. Matumba Man thinking to himself, there's no way this Nature's Prophet is playing this aggressively without some boys behind him. But now, Matumba Man has some boys of his own. Do they have any disables to stop him, though? Oh, the hookshot comes in just in time from Yapsor. Once again, right place, right time. He was the first person to TP in. 
Just those little things, right? Great like, team play too. Matumba got out of the way, and the moment he TP'd and he hooked, like he yeah. knew he Matumba knew he was gonna hook and gave him the angle, and then he moved out, and then also Yapsor knew Matumba was gonna move out of the way. He throws mm -hmm. the hook. It's just Great trust. And Great I like trust. this from, from Nisha, immediately moving to the other side of the map. He showed a bunch of heroes, right? What is any split pushing hero gonna do? Uh, I've gotta run down that top lane, and Nisha's gonna say, no, 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 this top lane's not gonna push out too much. I'm not gonna get it, let it get out of control. And he can do that because he's the one holding the Aegis. And he's got the travels, like he just second item from yeah. the track. Yule's travels, you feel so incredibly fast. Even if it's a bad travels game, it still feels like a good item because you're so hard to kill in fights, you just run away from people. But then, like you said, he has the Aegis to boot, so... Do you really need tanky items? You can just go for a Kaya, because he's got a... Casual Kaya building the Bloodstone. I guess not so casual, but... And now you can see Evil Genius is the only people that are getting farm. It's, uh, it's... I mean, they do have heroes that are able to find farm because they're natural mobility or split-pushing powers, but... Even so, it feels like the map is closing in on them, right? Arteezy's only throwing illusions down lane. Ramses is playing in their jungle right now with right. the teleport. And GPK is just strictly trying to defend. I do want to point out something cool about what Ramses is doing. He did he was given some sentries and wards. And so he placed his award in the mid lane. I think he probably placed that bot ward as well. And then he also placed his sentry on a high ground. He went to the tower and he's gonna get caught. Oh no. <laughs> I was literally about to say, because you against a Nature's Prophet, you would high ground ward places like that. Yep. Because you know that he's gonna play in your jungle. Yep. And so he put the sentry on the other high ground eye spot, but not that one. Yeah. That's why he got tripped off. Because Secret, they kind of next level. They put it in the other one. No, they got lucky. Just just the right one. He walked through it. <laughs> Tier three that's already taken a decent amount of damage in secret. Thanks to Chen, thanks to some of their mobility, they're just able to go from picking somebody off in that bottom lane and immediately be reformed up in a pretty good ball to take this top lane of barracks and evil geniuses. Uh, it just feels like they're running out of options here. And I don't know when this game turns around for them, Jenkins. Like, I don't know if this game delays another 10 minutes if they are still incapable of fighting. Crit tries to come in, goes to the toss back of the Yule, but Rage and Yule Scepter is going to stop that. Oh, that's Winter's not curse, but it's not what they wanted, that's for sure. A Song of Siren being used as well. That is Evil Geniuses using most of their big ultimates here, their big team fighting abilities, and getting nothing for it. That's all they need to do now is just... The seeds. Oh, look at him, look at him, look at him. They saw him. Ramses TP'd in, grabbed the bounty rune, and Nisha immediately TP'd in, and uh, Matumba Man infested inside of Nisha, so he's gonna join him for this kill on a Ramses. I'm a little surprised he died in the same spot, especially with the presence of mind to put the sentry on the other high ground D ward spot. Yeah, he must have just thought, oh, it was because I killed the tower. They just kind of like estimated where I was. Sure, that's, that's, yeah, definitely. But the truth was, they knew exactly where he was because there was a high ground ward. Right. So the nature's profit counter when you're when you're winning, which, uh... And look at this, Evil Genius is like, okay, they just showed bottom lane, guys. Let's push out to top. Arteezy faking himself there. He's just gonna run through all of this, but Crit, it doesn't have quite the same options here. Trying to get into the side lane of the trees and blink away. Fly will just hold the brace and extend his life. It won't be for very long, though. A Blood Rage Nisha is very scary, especially when he's caught that extra life, so he can kind of play fearlessly. GPK, got to be careful of the Basher here. There it goes. But the Rage is also running out. Crit with the toss back. They do have the Orchid there as well, but oh no, Ramses. He doesn't want to be in melee range. Fortunately, the Ensnare is there, tries to buy him a little bit of space, but he still goes down. Matumba Man does end up falling here, trading his life for Ramses. Nisha, the old GPK. I think he's just trying to cut more mid creep waves potentially and get away from this uh, team fight that's going around. Really solid pick off there from EG. Oh man, that would have been devastating. Yeah, it certainly would have. Nisha was like picking his nose or something, so he wasn't moving around. <laughs> he went like AFK for a second there. He needed to take a breather. Yeah, he's like, ooh, an arcane rune. Let me think about that. Now that was a that was a nice, really nice toss back, catching him without the rage there into the orchid. That's. The only way that they can kill him is by isolating him like that. But Tumbo, when he plays this hero, he's always, always on the front line. Super aggressive. All right, the kill on a puppy. That's what they want. Matamba Man's dead still, so they're like, all right, we got some time to work with. Let's just grab whoever we can. Not a terribly value kill, but, eh, you know, it's always kind of nice to kill Chen and his creeps. Yeah. 
Once again, with, without Matumba, like, there's nobody to really play the front line. Nisha doesn't want to do it. It's a little too risky. Zai, he hasn't built to be super tanky with the with the Veil build. I, I'm still left with Dada's that kind of perplexing problem here. When when does Evil Geniuses Dada feel good about their team fight? Like, what, what is the power spike? What are the items that we need here, Jenkins? Oh, man. Honestly, I feel like you build for... He's got a Dagon on Bloodseeker. Oh, boy. I've seen people doing this in pubs recently. It's It definitely feels nice. You can do a lot of damage. I think Fog was telling you you can do, like, 2,000 damage between <laughs> Ethereal Blade, Dagon with Blood Rage and uh, Veil. That sounds pretty high to me. Yeah, pretty high damage. And remember, like, this is in the late game when people have 50 armor, so it's it's quite effective in terms of the, the damage. Sure, absolutely. And in, in a weird way, it's like uh, everyone's scaling up in armor, but nobody really scales anymore in magic armor at some point. No, you just no. have the pipes. So in a weird way, it goes magic damage, super good, then physical damage, super good, and then magic damage starts coming back a little bit in the right. late game. It, it would be different if people got, like, six hearts. If, if multiple hearts was the meta, sure. then... then Magic damage, Monkey King Bar, for example, wouldn't be so good as well, because it's magic damage. Mm -hmm. But items, I, I'm Rapier. That's Rapier on probably Ramses. Every single time, you're just kind of watching secrets, run through lanes as quick as possible, move to the other side of the map, push the lanes in, trying to, to uh, counteract this split push that's happening. One more kill, then we get weed number. Oh, the weed number. That'll be funny. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at that when that happens. That'll be some, some good Ramsey's. Twitch chat memes. Ramses, let's go. No, you love those. He's in the trees. I'm now gonna... I want evil geniuses to get a kill. Don't, don't do it. We can't get three, two, two. EG, unfortunately, Matumba threw that opportunity. Now I think, I think to turn this game, you, you need some nuclear option. It's not, it's not enough to just get Naga's fourth item. They have the answer to it. It would be different if there wasn't a Lashrac on Team Secret. That's yeah. the thing. If there yeah. wasn't a clear answer to the Naga, then I think it would be different. And Yapsor, even you know something like this Meteor Hammer, this is somewhat of an answer. You have something that's at least a follow-up AoE stun for the Lashrac stun. If there's a bunch of illusions on you, you can just cogs them and then stun them and damage them with this Meteor Hammer. Then there's the Mjolnir as well. Like They're itemizing really well to deal with this. That's something that Secret is extremely good at, is that will often just pick heroes that are really good and have synergy and then itemize to deal with the enemy team's right. stuff. You know, they'll counter it in that way, which I think is a a very cool way of looking at the game. Uh, but they did pick, obviously, the counter, the Lashrak. Let's, let's not ignore that. This is a very good hero versus the Naga. Look at the Isha, just running in. He pops the spider legs and Darteezy says, no! Crit, he's still gonna be caught here. It looks like the hook shot did land and caught fly instead of Arteezy's Naga Siren that he was looking for. He do still manage to get the kill onto Crit. And now we have an Abyssal Blade complete for the Life Stealer. So Arteezy is gonna have to be even more scared than he was before. He's going for a uh, butterfly next to try and deal with the Life Stealer, but I. Like, I as soon as he builds a single component. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking, dude. The NPD is immediately going to come out from this hero that already loves the item. Yeah, and it's not like uh, Nisha cares at all about the butterfly. He does not care. Neither does I with his Dagon 5 soon. But it is a terrible position because it's like, okay, but do you get heart? Like, it, it, that that helps Lifestealer in a way. It's not. It's not easy. I, yeah. I would legitimately think that EG has a better shot in this game if they had a carry natures. If, if Ramses was their carry and took farm priority, mm. I would prefer a Nature's to carry this game because then you can actually get a Rapier. And with the Rapier, of course, everything changes. It's just so much damage. It's just a very weird power spike that is a little bit unnatural. Meanwhile, this Naga Siren and can't build it. It's kind of a linear growth with Naga, but they're, they're looking for something exponential at this point. Yeah. They're looking for two to the end growth. Maybe 10 to the end, I don't know. And here they are, evil geniuses, all huddle on the high ground. We've seen them make comebacks before, but uh, that's that's usually based around, oh, we've got Enigma. Oh, I just High realized. ground with a black hole or something. Weed number, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> take a lot of damage. They, they take there. a hefty amount of damage there. Oh but boy, tornadoes. 
This Heavy is, the amount of damage was also done to the tower. This is just annoying. Puppy, please mercy. We don't want to be slowed. Not in our base. This is a safe space. There are no safe spaces in 2020, Generation. Jenkins. This is true. Not when secrets involved. This is very true. Is that a da that's a fully completed Dagon 5, I think. Yeah. At 32 minutes. I, yeah, I, it is nice to see a different oh, no, Bloodseeker back because I feel like every Bloodseeker we saw went uh, Veil vale into uh, Guardian Greaves, right? Yes, yes. Veil vale into Yules into Guardian Greaves. Yeah. That's usually the build. I wonder if he's sending out Dagon components or if he's sending out the Lotus Orb. Is he being a good boy or is he, or is he being a bad boy? He's being a good you boy. You know he's being a good boy. Zai is Zai's only up. ever a good boy. He's like, I'm done memeing at this point. Dagon 3 is enough. We've 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 tortured EG enough. Let's put them out of their misery. Let's go high ground. Crit. Oh, they need to kill those creeps. Fortunately, they do. They're gonna stop Nisha's teleport and Puppy is free. Okay, take take control back of your triangle. That's definitely something. I like that he switched up the butterfly. I think Radiance we both had some issues with that. I think a lot of carry sure. players would look at that and be like. Uh, I don't know, but it's Arteezy, so he's probably making the right decision. Well, he did make the right decision, BKB, against the Naga. That is, or against the, uh, the Lashrak as a Naga. Yeah. That's kind of what he's got to get. That or an, a heart. And then he just goes the most popular damage item at this point with the right. MKB, right? Yep. Well, he gets a Life Stealer who has the evasion talent. He needs some single target DPS as much as he'd like to have stats on Naga. It's not the game for it. And maybe if he gets the MKB and goes for that build, a Rapier is... Not too bad if he's building to like right click with his main hero. So we had that uh, that change right where you now nice. life steal off of illusions. That was several patches back, yes. right? Yes. You, you also spell life steal off of illusions, I assume. Oh, that's a good question. I'm not. I'm not actually. Because Nisha now is an octarine core, which you're going to see him put to <laughs> terrible right now. Probably the uh, most iconic bloodstone hero. There. Yep. Lashrak well, like doesn't need that much mana. But he needs a bit. He needs a bit extra. And then the Bloodstone giving the percentage spell damage. Ooh, he's loving that. This is going to quickly uh, heal up real quick. 60 second cooldown for that Bloodstone. And going to start marching high ground. Any Blood Rage? Maybe uh, a bit risky. Maybe they don't need it, though. Glyph going to be used. Meteor Hammer lands in an Arteezy. GPK just kind of poking at them, trying to persuade Secret to back down. Doesn't look like they're going to. Oh, there's the jump forward. He missed place with the new coming out from Zion. They just quickly bring down this Ember Spirit who does not have buyback fly. Looks like he's going to be doing the same here. Couldn't even get off the Winter's Curse as he gets bumped around. Fortunately, he does have buyback. They're going to re-smoke up. They need a beautiful Winter's Curse here to be able to turn this team fight around. Four versus five. He's still smoked up, looking for his opening. Looks like he may play into the trees here. Nisha threatening to just run in as he does still have that Aegis. Toss over onto the side, but Tum oh no! But Tumbaban lands into RTZ and immediately starts going to work and RTZ got called a brace of size for the magic damage. I, uh, oh, okay, that's it. Blasted. I'm looking forward to see how Secret fares against OG. <laughs> Congratulations. Jeez. Wow.